Hello everyone, I'm Havoc and this is Factorio Space Exploration Plus. <clears throat> now, last time we had talked about doing some core mining with this right here, the core mining drill. And I spent some time figuring things out, which you'll see right here. Yes, that's right. We are running eight of these. And if you look down here, this is Express Belt. This is Blue Belt. I want you to watch it. And you're going to see it's a full Blue Belt's worth of these core samples coming out of here and running nonstop. And then as we go down, I have pulverizers pulverizing those core samples. Each one has production module 3's to the max in them and then a beacon with all speed module 3's in it to get those producing and if we scroll all the way down here to the bottom these ones down here are the last two they run most of the time I'm pretty sure that we're able to keep them fed uh, you'll see every now and then there might be a slight gap where they don't run but we're printing resources and the only thing this costs is power these right here take about 400 megawatts when they're running all the time. And they don't run all the time because you see these will back up and you see these two stop every so often. And that's when they back up here. And that's because of the, product, the productivity. Every so often each one of these is producing an extra one. And that means that when you get down to the bottom ones they don't actually have to run all the time. And that's nice. We're just printing resources. And... I'm not doing much with them yet. You'll see from this recipe, you get, let's hover over it, you get six iron ore, five copper ore, five coal, five stone, a 10% chance for some uranium, two vulcanite, 10 crude oil, and 50 water. So I have these big tanks down here. I just uh, deleted the water that was here by getting rid of the pipes for them to flow into and picking these up and then replace them because they were full. It stopped completely because I filled up with water. I'm going to have to set up uh, something to deal with this crude oil and water, uh, probably a an oil setup, you know, that uses water and oil. But you can see too here, it uses half the water that it does crude oil. So you say, well, where does the extra water go? I've got a pipe that runs off and up over to here where I'm taking the vulcanite and crushing it to get crushed vulcanite and pulverizers. Those crushed vulcanite pieces come over here to chemical plants where I'm using some of this water and I'm washing the crushed vulcanite and getting washed vulcanite, a little bit of stone from time to time, and steam out of here. And then I'm taking that steam and venting it out right over here. What I need to do is put a tank of some sorts down to hold a little bit of this uh, steam in the meantime because these might actually back up but what happens is at night when our accumulators kick on these things blow through the steam that's in this line and once I put a tank down here the, it'll produce steam all day long and then at the end of the day these will turn on and just chew through that steam and that keeps us producing our washed vulcanite and the washed vulcanite just comes down here and goes into our assembling machines and it takes washed vulcanite and creates vulcanite blocks and I have production modules in these and speed modules the extra stone that's produced is filtered out and goes into here I'm probably gonna make that into landfill to just super compress it but look look at the glorious vulcanite blocks that we have this was our hamper we had everything except for a large amount of vulcanite block in order to get rocking and rolling in space well guess what that's no longer the problem. We've got the vulcanite blocks and the other item that we were really hurting on up there was solar panels and I opened up the line for solar panels so we can produce a lot of them and buffer a lot. The only issue with this is this is going to shut down as soon as this warehouse fills up here <laughs> really soon actually looking at this. This is going to fill up in a matter of minutes and this line will back up to where they can't offload the iron and all of the other ones will stop. So we're going to need to come over here with trains and load from a train 
out of these warehouses and then take the train material and just take it down over here somewhere and uh, put it into our resource lines where it's and try and make it the priority so what you can do is you can put down say this is the main line that we have coming in and then I'm going to do our resources here I can say I want you to do an input priority on the left hand side and it will consume these resources before taking what's down on the ground coming in right here and or something we could also do is just make a whole nother smelting line such as these place them down and then have the output be what we prioritize to come in either way I need to start consuming these resources in order to keep producing the vulcanite and the coal I can just take and add that in to uh, make plastic when we start refining the crude oil we've gotten a little bit of uranium it doesn't produce a whole lot but hey every little bit helps this is free we're printing money right here ladies and gentlemen we are printing money free resources at the cost of power oh and did I mention most of our power is essentially free because it's solar so we are printing resources for free with the core mining drills but we're gonna move on from this I want to get hold on I'm <laughs> I have some vulcanite on me let's put that up over here and what I want to do is take a bunch of this vulcanite and load it up and take it into space that and some solar panels so let's use our jetpack because that's much faster and that's the way to travel nowadays and we're gonna just head right down here I mean look at this speed and you fly over everything so you don't crash into anything I don't need the tank or anything, anything else crazy I also keep forgetting to fix up my stone mining right over there and that's causing a real bad slowdown on glass but if I come right over here to solar panels oh yes we are looking good on solar panels which means I want to grab solar panels and I want to grab vulcanite block and lots of them and just load it up so if I say oh that's a passive provider chest <laughs> look at me losing my mind over here but we're gonna go and find the vulcanite block which is right here and say 4000 and then we're going to do half of that in solar panels because they stack to half. 2,000. And then we're going to let those grab. It's already bringing 18K worth of solar panels and the 4K of Vulcanite block. And that can just start loading up because those are the resources that we need to take into space with us this time. We can empty some of these things that I know I'm not going to use in outer space right now and probably put this one little bitty light down somewhere right there looks good way to go <laughs> surprised we're getting hit <laughs> there are even more black dots I don't know if anyone noticed when I opened the map uh, but I went around and blasted the biters well back even further now they've had time to come back in so they are doing that but it did give us a brief moment of uh, respite from them. And while that's loading up, let's look at what else we can take up there. We're going to take the rest of the science packs as well, except for yellows. We have too many yellows up there as it is right now. So we're going to grab everything other than the yellows and take that up with us for this trip. But primarily what we want are our uh, vulcanite blocks and solar panels to get up into space that's what's causing the slowdown because the reason our science isn't moving at all right now is we're no longer producing the rocket science and we're no longer producing it because I think we ran out of the vulcanite blocks I'm, I'm fairly certain I only had a hundred and I used a couple of them for crafting so I had less than a hundred And also, while we're waiting for that to fill up, I think it's probably a really good time to head over here and fix our uh, stone mining situation. Let's 
grab some drills, and then we'll pick up the drills that are over here. Why is this backwards? What happened here? I would like this to be one, and this to be two. Okay. I don't know why that got flipped around. I must have hit a button that I'm not aware of. But if you look, we are barely moving on anything over here. And that's because we've pretty much cleared out the stone. And the what little bits left is moving slow. Let's give it some speed. Juice it up real good. Where are we at here? There you go. And we can just tap this other section. I've got power poles everywhere just looking messy. And we're going to just put some power poles right down here. We will take a quick snag of a section like that. Rotate it to go the other direction. And we'll place it down. And then we're going to change the output here. And just tie that in. We'll use a blue. There. That's super simple. And the question that I have now is, can I tile this? Is there some way in which it will work like that? OK, good. It should, because of the way I set these up, they should tile. But you never know. And I'll just hand place these last two drills right here. And as soon as the bots from the base bring those items, that'll get moving again. But I want to place another one down right here as well. And just take that right up like so. And as soon as the bots bring the rest of these items, it'll get moving and grooving for us. And I'm going to deviate from the design right down here because I have room to just throw a power pole right there. That was a simple fix. As soon as that other line gets moving, we'll have a good amount of stone coming down the line once again, and that will fix our problems there. Let's go check and see how our rocket's doing on filling with vulcanite and solar panels. Hopefully it's doing really well. And we can go ahead and launch. Let's see. Uh, it's not as great as I was hoping. <laughs> My bots are still kind of slow. It's it's a thing. So let's see if we can't help them along. I can probably grab the solar panels. Oop, and I went flying right past them. Oop. Using the jetpack takes a little bit of practice. And we'll go grab as many vulcanite blocks as I can fit in my inventory, as I'm certain there's still a ton up here. But look at the bots flying everywhere. Yes, we are moving and grooving with the robotic assistance. I can just follow the line right here that they are taking to bring the vulcanite. You can see where they're stopping to charge along the way. All right, just give me as much as I can hold. Perfect. And then I'm going to just turn off those uh, inserters temporarily. I'll, I might just pick them up when I get back down here. So that while it's building the next rocket, it's not trying to fill it during construction. There's a ways in which you can automate the process using um, the wiring, the red and green wires. And that will, here, we'll just rotate these there problem solved. That looks pretty good. We've got some things. What is it saying? Oh, I keep forgetting. We don't want to suffocate. Put your thruster suit on. Now, 
we're good to go let's launch and when we get up there and offload the uh, vulcanite blocks we'll end up getting uh, our science rocking and rolling again which is good because I really want to get some extra damage on those items and start looking at other science packs so let's just land right here and vulcanite blocks solar panels There we go. Now you can get back to work. And I had room. I was concerned I wouldn't be able to fit all those, but we're going to put them right back in here, including the cargo pads, like we normally do. So when we go back, we can put re, uh, recycle those parts. <laughs> Look at the bots work. It's magical. Something about that is oddly satisfying. I, I've mentioned that before, but it's just fun to watch. So that gets our science back online, and we can get things moving down our tech tree. But like I was talking about, I want to look at what it will take to get the different science packs. I, th I think we're looking at, um, let's see, let me look in the science tree and at energy catalogs, I think is what it's called. Our energy science pack, the first tier, requires a whole slew of things <laughs> in order to get a particle accelerator and then an energy catalog and then energy science. But the reason I want to get into energy science is this leads us directly towards the orbital ion cannon. And I'm having a lot of fun with the atomic artillery, but as I've said before, I am a huge fan of the Command and Conquer series and having the ability to make an orbital ion cannon and fire it in Factorio is something that would just make me happy. Also, worker robot speed, two more levels of it can be achieved from just the first level of energy science. I say just the first level. <laughs> It'll take a lot to get to, but I want to work on these sciences to get our way down here. And you're going to notice that in order to make this, I need holmium plate. And holmium, if we press U, is in high abundance on etanor. There's a low threat level there, but there is a threat level. Let's just take a look. We have a satellite in orbit around this surface, so we can take a look at it using the satellite. And of course, because it's a different planet, we're going to have cliffs right here. Is copper ore. There's holmonite right here. Real close to the landing zone. But another issue that I'm going to have once I get here is how do you get back? Right? So there's a few different ways in which we could get back to where we came from. I could build an entire factory on this planet that will make a rocket make rocket parts and fuel and allow you to come back and that's probably something I'm gonna look for uh, getting into later on because I can core uh, drill here on this other planet as well and it'll give different resources but I'm pretty sure the first round gives you the the resources that are prevalent here such as if I look at which one is the holmium? This one. See, if I process the holmonite core fragment, it gives me regular core fragments. And if you process regular core fragments, you get a little bit of all the resources. So what I'm looking at here is eventually we're going to have a setup where we go there and we have a small base which makes rockets and resources and sends them back up automatically. It loads up what we want from that planet, whatever type of resources there, and launches a rocket at our um, orbital base somewhere as long as the landing pad is available. And we'll set that up using the transmission. Uh, where are they at? The signal transmitters. 
which are here, logistics network interface, these right here, signal receiver and signal transmitter. But that's a little down the road. However, what I think we're going to do now is take enough cargo rocket sections with us when we launch to go there to make a couple of rockets to get back, as well as enough fuel. So I want to make, I would say, a care package. I need to figure out what am I going to need in order to defend an area, put some solar panels on it, defend it, and then get back from that planet and remake another rocket. And I'll have to do that and figure out how to bring the Holmanite back. But I'm probably going to try and uh, take the Holmanite that we get and bring it into space and process it here in space. Now, I haven't researched any of the things yet, so I can't see the trees that they take, but I'm fairly certain that you process them in machines in space. So if we look here, Holmanite processing in a mechanical facility, in a decontamination facility, in a biochemical facility. This one can be done in a thermodynamics facility. All of these things are in space. Now I see also that it can be done in regular furnaces. This can be done in a chemical plant. That can be done in a chemical plant. And this can be done in a pulverizer. So all of these things can, do, can be done planet side. And what we may do actually is process all of the resources up until you get to holmium ingots on the planet where we're gathering the holmium and then bring it up. But <laughs> we also have to get into energy catalogs and an energy catalog, the recipe for that is all of these other things. So we're going, we will need the holmium plate before we can even start making these things. But we're going to have to get into ion, steam, uh, multispectral mirrors, bringing uranium up here, just a whole list of other things. So it's a bit of a chain to get into. Right now, what I want to look at is what's the best way to get the cargo rocket sections, I believe is what they're called. Where are they at here? Right here. You can make these packaged cargo rocket sections, which are five cargo rocket sections in one. So you can condense down however many you have, and then you can unpack them right here and get five back. And I think that's probably how we're going to take enough sections to go make another rocket somewhere else. Let's go ahead and go back to the surface. I brought enough materials up here that this should run for quite a while. This should process as many of the rocket science packs as I can possibly hold. We've got a hundred here. This has several hundred here. What are we waiting on? We're we waiting on formatted cards and this we're waiting on red circuits. But we've got enough to make many, many hundred rocket science packs up here right now. So we're gonna leave that alone. Let it do its thing. Go back to the surface and figure out how exactly we're going to ramp up the production of our cargo rocket sections so we can pack them. Right now, I've been building all of these out of a single little assembly machine. And that's great and all, but I'm going to need a whole production line for this. And we're going to go down the chain. So these require more rocket control units, low density structures, and heat shields. And then our little setup over here for our cargo pods and our rocket fuel tanks. So I want to look at setting up real production lines probably down over here for these items so we can make lots of them and really ramp the production up. And I'm going to leave a little bit of room in this area. I'm probably going to start this further out to the right over here because I'm thinking that like I'm talking about earlier, these resources, and it's happened, <laughs> our iron is backed up all the way, which means nothing is running anymore. We have a lot of resources sitting over here, ready for use. I want to train those resources down here, maybe on this side of our uh, rail network, and start processing them locally right here and feed them in to supplement our bus because our bus is going to get absolutely destroyed if I try and make all of these items in mass. 
we won't be able to feed it with what we currently have coming out of our production lines here. I mean, you can already see <laughs> we're looking very thin on this end. It looks good on the end where I'm standing because everything's backed up. But if you look at our production, it's getting thin. So we're going to work towards setting up supplemental production lines, supplemental supply chains down here. Some iron, some copper, probably steel. We need a really good setup for our glass. We are just, well, this isn't cutting it anymore. You can see this isn't cutting it. We're going to do a setup for the glass like we did right over here with these industrial furnaces. And I'm going to find out exactly how many I need to produce glass coming out in a significant amount. And we are just tapping everything. Let's, let's look at the map and see. We've already tapped, what, a little bit over a million from that iron ore there. And this is down to 3.7 million. Our copper is 5.7. Our coal shouldn't be going down as fast because we're only using it now to make plastic and to make uh, grenades and a couple of other things, so it's, it's not consuming as much. But that's the plan. We're going to work on industrial forge setups. And I want to make sure that this can make glass, and it can. Four glass, four seconds. That means you need to feed these things an absolute ton of sand. If you put production modules in and then speed it up, it will help. But I have lots of blue belt. It's another thing I'll show you. I really ramped up the production of blue belt. Right here. I have, let's see, two full passive provider chests and two that are starting to fill up quickly. And then I have two rows. I just open these up and just letting them run. Just produce as many as you can produce. Same thing with our science not the underground belt and the splitters. I've got them limited still because it will consume all of my space transport belt to make more of these and I'll have no tra space transport belt. So I'm trying to buffer some of that up. But with that said, we've got some work to do. And I think I'm gonna do that off camera. I think this is a pretty good uh, point in which to stop and I can bring y'all back in next time and show a little bit of what I'm working on getting the resources processed and uh, Talk y'all through what I set up off camera and how that works if you really like this setup I have for the core mining drills uh, I will be trying to set up a factorio prints page for this. I've never done it before So I don't know exactly how you do that and how it works. You've probably noticed in the description of my videos, I added in links to the uh, blueprints that I've been using, the blueprint books, and those are links to the Factorio print site itself. But I'm going to try and set one up for the uh, core mining drill build that I made over here. I'm not going to include the warehouses and all of that. It will just be the uh, core mining drill and the processing of it right below it. <laughs> and it looks a little messy because I have coal coming in it here and there's oil up here. It ended up be, being a little bit bigger than I was expecting, but that's okay. I will try and set up a factor, factorial prints page for this right here. For anyone wants to build this setup in their own world, and you may not have blue belts yet, you can use lower tier belts. I'm sure you noticed earlier, even when it was running wide open, we were barely producing a, a little bit at a time. It's It's not so rampant that you really need blue belts. But if you enjoyed today's video and you would like to see more like it, please consider liking the video and subscribing to my channel. And I will see you all next time.